All right, guys, I want to talk about the process for someone who's just beginning to uh, port their LS cathedral port or whatever cylinder head. I'll start out with this style bit. Okay. Now, once you start trying to port, you'll see why this shape is super beneficial to you when you're working this guide and later when you're trying to blend the bottom half of that seat or bowl cut into this area because that's a perfect contour to blend that stuff in the back side of that bowl and it's also a good shape and size when you start lowering the swirl ramp but what I wanted to point out was if you look at this shiny area around this part of the valve guide boss it's already been removed but when you look at your factory head it's going to have like a lip it's going to come up this tail and once it gets to this area right before the guide itself it's going to have like a bulb or a lip that goes from here all the way around start out by taking that little lip off down to, you know to the, where it looks like you're going to keep an eye on this area right here done on this one is i have used that same uh cutting burr but i've kind of taken this down a little further and then i've come down and i started removing this top ridge of that swirl ramp with the fat part of that cutting burr i don't want you cutting down here this floor from this floor up to here is your reference point we're not going to go any lower in this area than this reference point below this area is a water pass we're going to take that lip off and we're going to start taking this top edge of the swirl ramp out what I've done here is i've taken out even more of the swirl ramp but see down here I have not hurt or disturbed my reference point. So we're going to talk about here in a minute all these little black sharpie marks you'll see in these chambers lining up. This lines up with this and then the guide in turn will line up with the apex of the intake port. But the port bias, it means the larger part of the port that flows the most air is over here okay so when you're porting on this side of the port we're not going to pull back on this wall any more than it takes to blend our bowl cut into the port okay two reasons number one this is the lower side the lower flow side of your bias port so you don't gain anything by pushing this wall back and trying to force air to turn that's coming off of this. You know what I mean? It's just going to jump over that dead area. Any porting theory you see talks about your this short side or this uh, low, I call it low flow side, but it's the, the small side of your uh, biased port you don't pull that back because you don't gain flow numbers. The second and really critical reason why you don't start digging on this side is there's water passage. See that water? It runs right between there. All right, this I have removed all of that lip. See, all that material is shiny, which is hard to see because it's kind of dirty. What I've done, and I have switched bits a couple of times on this head to, to fit what I'm trying to do, but I wanted to still try to keep it in stages for you. Working this down a little more on this side, working this over, blending it into this outer larger flow wall, and then working this down towards our reference point. Make that transition from the area we're removing seamlessly into this back wall if you go too deep here and cause that air to boom hit this wall hopefully that makes sense to you guys from where it comes in to where it comes out you want the least amount of bend as possible to 
keep that air happy as it's moving through the port. Here is a representation, hopefully you guys can see it, where I won't pull this back any farther than where it is now. This reference point behind the guide doesn't need to be lowered or removed. What you want is that air to come around that guide, boom, climb this wall. You don't want that air, at, at any of it, calling a, an eddy. Some people call it an eddy or a whirlpool or a turbulent effect. You don't want it coming around this thing and causing a bunch of problems right behind the guide because that's your, that's your flow point. You know, when you, when you out line up that flow point between the guide and, and where it's going to go into the cylinder, you want this to be as smooth and as efficient as possible. Just visualize this side of the guide coming straight back and just blending that into our, our removal area because we want that air to come in, boom, climb the wall, get out of there. Same thing on this side. Boom, follow follow the path of least resistance, get in there. So what I was doing in, in this particular portion of our instructional video, video is smoothing things out and lowering things down. But I took that double cut egg and I started working this a little more. Working that, pulling this in on this side, bringing it into that tail. I actually, you know, spent a little bit of time before dinner last night just kind of working this, working this. I started to pull this back a little bit. Again, here's my reference. I've got my guide to my reference point, my black Sharpie. Boom. I'm going to leave this portion of this material behind that guide to help me and encourage that air to keep its momentum. Go around, you know, it's going to have a little bit of a distraction here because, you know, hello, you got to have a guide for your stupid valve but boom we're gonna come around that guide we're gonna follow that speed and that velocity and get out of the port gone a little further with making the port you know blended smooth and whatnot with that double cut burr because it does cut a little slower went ahead and uh, worked my blend from my 90 percent bowl cut from the bottom of the seat into this back wall the porting theory is you don't want to dig any material behind the guide that you don't have to take out to make it smooth. We want this back wall behind the guide to be as least of an angle as possible. I mean, clearly looking at a cylinder head, it's a pretty sharp turn, you know, 90 degree turn or thereabouts. So it's not like it's going to be perfect but everything you can do to reduce that angle from here to getting into the cylinder is gonna be beneficial. That's my shape. This is gonna be my blend into the port. You know, this is how you do it, guys. You get in here, you get familiar with your burrs, your tools, how to control, number one, how to control them so you don't hurt anything and you just work it down into the shape that you want to promote the flow and try not to make any air turn corners because contrary to what people want to try to tell you air doesn't like to turn corners and when it does it gets pissed off at you and it'll start tumbling and, and fussing and you know if you could hear someone flowing a cylinder head that has poor porting work or a poor you know basic design it sometimes will howl really loudly because the air gets so turbulent and so mad and pissed off that it'll sit there and vibrate and howl and make all kinds of weird noises it shouldn't be making so you know just be sensible in what you're wanting to do get the thing smoothed out get the shapes you're wanting you know, everything can be found on the internet. All this porting theory can be researched. You know, like I've said in previous videos, um, I use a lot of the math side of it that I got from Joe Mondello's porting theory. But David Vizard, uh, Jim Hand, there's a lot of old school porters plus modern porters. I'm not going to leave them out that understand the, the, the math or the theory behind 
how to keep the air moving and try to avoid as much uh, turbulence as possible, find something to read up on. You know, understand why you're doing it and what to avoid. More importantly, is what not to do and why you're not supposed to do that. You know, know more about what you're not supposed to do. That way, you don't make those mistakes. Um, you know, when you start looking at high, high end stage three heads, you know, you'll get into all kinds of different theories and different gains. Um, for example, from your seating surface of your valve guy, or I'm sorry, your valve seat into your blend. Okay. Just that little bitty area right there that, um, we'll just say that uh, darker area below the seating surface the profile that has from the seating surface in or out of the port can make a huge difference in flow numbers between 100 thousandths and 300 thousandths valve lift. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize when you look at a, at a valve, throw this in real quick, this little edge right here, like when you're from your ceiling surface of a valve, from that point in towards the stem, if you do a back cut on those, if you take that little machined ridge, see if you guys can see it. See that little line right there? That ridge looks insignificant. Doesn't mean anything. But you can actually have the what they call back facing your valves and have that smoothed all the way back because you know depend on how much you want to pay or how much work you want to do you can actually radius that from the ceiling surface sorry from the ceiling surface back you can back cut that valve and gain you know, three to seven CFM sometimes even more at that lower 100 to 300 thousandths valve lift and then you'll still see a solid you know three to five more CFM even at the higher lift ranges at the higher flow so those are all those little tricks that people do to get bigger numbers out of their heads and of course they charge you a lot of money to do them and they may or may not mention it to you so anyway that's my progress report right now um, I need to focus on getting more work done it does take a lot of time to make these videos especially when I'm trying to do like a step-by-step uh, little progress by little progress example of how to work through removing that swirl ramp and how to reduce the uh, valve guide boss and blend it all in and all that good stuff so anyway I appreciate you guys watching please like subscribe and share hit the little bell because apparently if you don't hit the bell then they're not going to tell you that I posted a video and that's kind of important to me so uh, keep hanging there if you have any questions let me know in the comments Go out and have some fun. Try to make some power.